turn my mic on. That always hope helps. Um, okay. Just a couple of brief statements to begin this. Um, this is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go to executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all of the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chairperson if you are unable to see or hear the proceedings. The board works from a prepared agenda, which is now in a new format, which will take me a moment to get used to. Um, and we'll take up tonight's items in the following order. Uh, we will, as we call the roll, um, we will review um, the, the miscellaneous appeal notice for appeal 2761 that was taken up at last month's meeting. We will then take up two new appeals, appeal 2763, limited reduction of yardside residential appeal by Garrison Consulting on behalf of Joan Levecki. Great. 56 Two Rod Road, Assessor's Map, uh, R50.7, blah, blah, blah. And then the second one appealed 2764, also a limited direction of yard size residential appeal. This by Tyler Sukforth at 10 Welch Drive. Terrific. Um, with that, Doreen, could you call the roll? Oh, just in time. Yeah. Just in time. Doreen, if you could call the roll. <laughs> Michelle Stevenson? Here. David Here. Peter Poilinger? Here. Richard Silkman? Here. 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 Let's see. Uh, we, um, uh, Joe Doherty, who is our second alternate, is unable to attend tonight. That's fine. We have a, uh, a full quorum present, and uh, um, Kyle will be uh, acting in his alternate role for, the, for tonight's uh, performance. I don't know why I said that. Um, so the first item that we have on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. I was not here last week, uh, last month, so I will not um, be voting on this one. Uh, but if I could have a motion, uh, if, unless there's discussion, I could have a motion to approve. Will four be enough to approve this? Because I wasn't here either. Yeah. Okay. You guys can still approve the minutes if you didn't, if you reviewed I'd them. prefer not to. Yeah. Okay. okay. I have a motion to approve. Thanks. Second. Thank you, Richard. Any discussion? If we could see a vote for, or a show of hands for, for that, for the four members vote, that is unanimous. Thank you. Then we'll go right into the uh, agenda. This is, uh, again, I was not here for this one, but I will, uh, we, we now have a uh, final, um, uh, final order for Appeal 2761. Um, do we have any discussion, or do we um, have a motion to approve the order as written? I move we appeal, approve the order as written. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Christine. Any discussion? And again, I will not be voting on this as I did not hear it. Nor will I. Okay, David. Uh, could uh, I see a show of, uh, actually we'll call the roll on uh, the approval of this one. Dreen? Christine Snow. Aye. Michelle Stevenson. Yes. Richard Silkman. Yes. And Kyle Noonan. Yes. And that passes. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, now our new business for the evening. We'll start with um, 2763, limited reduction of yardside appeal by Garrison Consulting on behalf of Joan Levecki at 562 Rod Road. We went right to the right place. Didn't need to be asked. Thank you very much. And we'll have you go for it. Just give us a general view of what we'll, the, uh, the appellants are looking for, and then we'll, we'll go through the, the formal process um, uh, once, once we hear you. Yeah, no, appreciate that. Uh, again, uh, thank you for uh, hearing us tonight. My name is Matthew Winch here on, uh, from Garrison Consulting here on behalf of uh, Joanne Levecki, the applicant. Uh, also joining uh, Joanne this evening are uh, her daughter, uh, Maria, and her son-in-law, Mike. Um, the project itself, uh, just a quick overview, the genesis of, of why we're here this evening for this appeal. Um, Mike and Maria uh, live uh, just down the road, uh, off of Two Rod Road. Uh, Joanne obviously lives here in this residence, and they're looking to uh, consolidate both households into one uh, residence. And um, that's in an effort to uh, help Joanne as she uh, uh, ages in life, as well as uh, to consolidate two households that are uh, now no longer um, 
housing children uh, who are uh, in, in college. Uh, so I just wanted to give that quick uh, backdrop as uh, an explanation as to why we're here this evening. Um, I have a few slides to share with you that just runs through what you've already got in front of you from uh, the standpoint of the application itself. Uh, those slides are organized in a way that'll just run through the existing site plan, uh, the past, some past improvements just to give a little quick overview of the history, uh, proposed site plan in a large site detail as to um, the areas that we're looking at for some uh, setback relief, a few elevations, uh, an alternate scheme that was looked at um, early on in the process of laying out and designing the property and then some questions uh, from the board as and if appropriate. So the um, layout itself, the existing site plan, uh, we had a survey done last spring. Uh, Steve Martin, professional land surveyor, completed that work for us, established uh, the uh, perimeter uh, property lines as well as the setbacks indicated for us. And at that time, became, we became aware that it was going to be a um, tight fit along the side of the uh, property where we want to add um, not only a third garage bay um, for the three individuals for parking their cars uh, inside a garage, but also the addition itself that would run down uh, the side of this more southerly property line. Um, in looking at a variety of schemes, it was seen as the best option to move forward was to move forward with a development that um, tried to tuck this addition on that side and to get a, re to get a proper size garage bay in there um, was challenging. We even reduced it a little bit uh, as much as we thought we could for a reasonable one bay uh, um, garage bay and that led us to uh, coming up with the scheme that we've presented to you tonight. Um, just quickly taking a step back, the original house was uh, built in the late 60s, early 70s. It was a uh, ranch structure then, it is still today. Uh, had one, uh, a one bay car garage, and this plan that you see here that we found from some old town records shows uh, a, a beauty salon that was put in the existing garage uh, in the 1970s that has since been removed um, back with some later improvements. But uh, this is the original footprint of the building and the front of the building even um, clips what's part of the front yard setback today, uh, which we'll touch on in a little bit. Um, along those improvements, we also uh, in the uh, mid-1990s, late 90s, there was a second garage bay added. This postdates uh, some of the exceptions within the town ordinances uh, for, for construction prior to 1990, but it's significant because it was uh, in addition on that southerly side heading towards that side yard um, setback. Uh, that work was completed in either 1999 or early 2000. Um, what we're looking to accomplish here is uh, there are three impacted areas um, specifically. It's, it really could be distilled down to two, but I've identified it in three separate graphics here on this um, close-up of the site. We have the front yard setback uh, exception that we're looking for approval on, which shows an extension of an existing deck um, and stairway that, that currently encroach into the setback. We're just looking to pull that, if you will, down the side of the existing residence, and I would actually be pulling it um, towards a, a reduction, a, a, uh, the, the setback line of the property line. The house is not parallel to the front yard setback or the side yard setback. So the further we actually pull the deck down, down the property, the less um, the, the impact into the setback is. But where we are here at this point, um, we are looking at a pretty modest um, six inch or so uh, impact at the uh, corner of the deck and then uh, a more significant but existing impact of about two foot 10 inches for the stairway to come down into um, the, uh, the, the setback itself on the front, front yard. Um, along the side yard, as you can see, as I mentioned uh, a few seconds ago, the, the house isn't parallel to any property line. And it's not obviously parallel to the uh, side yard setback. As you can see uh, with the 15-foot with the setback shown in the red dotted line, it um, impacts a, a tiny corner of the front of the garage. And then as we get to the rear of the addition, that, that impact grows uh, a little bit from uh, about two foot um, six inches. I'm trying to read my small text here. Um, apologies for not remembering it off the top of my head. And to about a four foot eight inch 
um, distance. And I will note that, that, that these distances are also to the drip line of the overhang of the roof, um, not to the face of the structure. So uh, we are including the drip line in our application for uh, setback relief. And the, the uh, overhang itself is about a one foot uh, to, to 14 inch overhang, which is something that we're duplicating from the existing house. The existing house has some pretty um, strong overhangs around the existing ranch structure, and we want to duplicate that um, in portions of this addition, um, which we've noted here on the application. Um, some of the existing uh, proposed elevations uh, you can see here, we've got uh, the, the rear and the front yard elevations shown here, um, showing what this proposed addition would look like. And it also starts to give you a sense of how this property also slopes front to back. Uh, as you can see along the back side, uh, there is a, a reduction in grade uh, that we're trying to also mitigate with the uh, um, property line to the uh, southerly side as it comes up to the addition as we come down around the back side to try and get a full-sized um, entryway into the rear of the uh, uh, addition for easier basement access um, to the addition side. Um, we're also um, looking at, as you can see here uh, in, the, in the images, the uh, overhangs of the uh, um, proposed elevations uh, begin to mimic those of the existing uh, structure as well. Um, we can also show you a few elevations of the side as well. A um, little bit more subdued from the side elevations uh, than the, re the rear and the front, um, but you can again see how as we move front to back on this uh, southerly elevation, how this, the uh, site starts to slope down in a way um, to tie into the existing grades further down the house. Um, that's important to note here because when we talk about the existing scheme, uh, uh, alternate schemes in a second, some of what we explored would start to add some additional costs as well as struggles as how we uh, resolve this um, grade change if we tried to come up with a solution different than what we've uh, presented as our ideal solution here. Um, and here is just a quick concept study that, that I had done for the client uh, to show, you know, here's, a scheme, here's an option that begins to talk about layouts that would work within some of the setbacks, and that was to create an extension of a paved driveway that's coming around the side of the house that um, would be removed in our um, applied for uh, preferred scheme uh, because there would be a new garage structure there. Um, and, and to get a oddly placed garage off the side of the house that works inside the setback, we also have to place it behind the house in a way that separates it from obviously the other two existing garage bays, but it's also now between a mudroom, bathroom, and laundry room area um, that really kind of broke the house up. It didn't really create um, the, the, the feeling that they wanted to have of um, being able to share some spaces together, but while also having some uh, separation of space um, when they wanted it um, on occasions. And it also would drive us to have to uh, place retaining walls on the side of the property, as well as towards the rear of the driveway and then potentially steps down to get to the rear of the house from, from this added garage being placed, like I said, at an odd spot behind the house. Um, the existing mudroom, laundry room, and those other spaces on the back of the house sit on a full foundation, um, full depth basement foundation, and we didn't want to have to backfill an existing foundation to try and somehow put a garage bay at 90 degrees to the existing uh, garage bay facing, facing the street with this side entrance coming around the corner of the house. And it also seemed a lot more unsightly um, to, to the abutter because it was gonna bring um, a driveway, a retaining wall, and other features right up to the edge of their property line, which they, they're entitled to do, but it just seemed um, the opposite direction of where we wanted to head to in the, in the sense of trying to achieve something that was uh, pleasant to look at and not um, kind of overbearing, if you will. Um, and then the other aspect of this scheme when we discussed it is it also would consume the existing bulkhead down into the existing basement, which they still want to maintain. So we pivoted away from this to uh, arrive at the scheme that we submitted to you today, feeling that the impacts were modest enough that um, it, it was something we thought 
was worthwhile discussing with the Zoning Board of Appeals. <laughs> and I'll just add that we also did look at um, adding the, the garage bay on the other side of the house, and it's the only other spot it can go, right? And it was really a non-starter as well because at that point now you're really you know, creating, you know, how are we gonna create the second, second access point coming across the front yard? Are we gonna be able to apply for two driveway openings to come into a single property? Uh, it seemed more complicated and confusing than it was worth um, to, to try and explore something on the opposite side of the house where we do have a much larger side yard setback, but one that wasn't going to help us achieve the overall goal of adding a uh, additional garage bay as well as the um, bedroom uh, living room spaces that we're also adding off the back of the house. Um, so with that, I will um, leave it to you with any questions that you might have. Open it up to the, to the board here for general questions before we start going through the findings of fact. No general questions, that's pretty good, okay. Uh, terrific, then we will, uh, um, it seems fairly straightforward. Thank you very much for the presentation. The, the materials are very helpful. Um, we will uh, go through here and, um, let's see. We'll just have you read in your responses. Oh, we still need you up there. Sorry? We'll have you read in your responses to the um, to the, uh, to, the to the application. Um, I noted too um, that uh, on item C three, you hadn't filled in um, uh, the information on the physical features a lot, but the materials go through a pretty thorough explanation of this. So if you just give us some verbiage that we can insert in there for item for, for that when we come to it, just as heads up. I, I think you've more than addressed. The, the item in your materials, it's just that particular paragraph wasn't included in the application. So, um, so first, generally describe the project and why a limited reduction of yard size is needed. Just scrolling to, so C, C.1? Yeah. Yep. Um, the original home, uh, or actually, uh, no, A. Yeah, no day. I got to get back to it. There we go. Sorry. Um, the project will include a third garage bay and additional living space off the rear of the house. The placement of the garage was studied in two other locations, but they did not work either functionally or due to the slope nature of the property. Architectural plans are included and also show the setback impacts along with the submitted site plan. Uh, as drawn, the addition will impact both the front yard and side yard setbacks. Exact impacts are listed below. Great. And uh, if you could just read those off then. Yep, uh, B lists the exact dimensional reduction requested front yard impact. The existing front porch steps in a portion of the garage bays presently sit in the front yard setback. These impacts all uh, date to the original construction of the residence in the early 1970s. Current plans extend that front porch along the front yard setback and would impact about two foot 10 inches of that required front yard setback depth. This is primarily to allow the front steps to be rebuilt more or less in their original place. Uh, the side yard impact along the southerly side yard is where the main addition is placed. The existing building is not perpendicular to the front and side yard property lines. As a result, this addition would impact four foot nine inches of the side yard at its maximum point. This amount reduces as the addition nears the front of the property as shown on the site plan. Great. Perfect. Okay, and now we'll then go into the, um, the, uh, the demonstrated findings. The, First one, the existing buildings are structured on a lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, where the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Uh, as noted, the original home was constructed prior to 7-3-1991. However, the there was an addition added in 1999-2000. I have a question for Brian on that one. Does the addition have any impact on the consideration of this item? My read... My read on the uh, on the legal basis of the appeal is that this appeal can be for the expansion or enlargement of an existing building or structure, and it says um, the existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991. It does not differentiate between the existing structure and any, any subsequent additions. Okay. 
So my read is, I think it's up to the board, but yeah. I believe that um, it qualifies for this type of appeal based on the existing original structure. I think it's a, a point of, of discussion as to whether or not the addition to the House has in some way made this request um, necessary, but I also believe that in this case the applicant has done a good job of explaining other things that they considered yeah. besides that. No, so no, it's, it's it, really it, kind of up to the board to have that discussion. And, and it's as much a general question as yeah. well. At what yeah. point does sure. a post-91 change to the structure make this a, a post-91 consideration as opposed to a pre-91 grandfathering? So, yeah. Dan. So if I understand the, uh, the addition that was placed here in approximately 1999 or 2000, was the expansion of the garage, the original garage, which was a one bay to a two bay. Is that correct? Correct. It added a second bay. Really, it wasn't in here specifically at this point, so I want to make sure that's what we're talking about. 1999, right. so, they added a second garage so bay. With, yes. the, uh, with that expansion, the way it currently exists right now, not what you're asking for, is that within the setbacks allowed? Yes. Okay. I think that, that really answers our point. Yes. That. So is it's conforming as it, as it is. So what he's asking for is a variance for the addition only. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and general questions we can um, hold in for our discussion, but if we have questions now, feel free to ask them. Just um, we'll, we'll go through. But, uh, but with that in mind, number two, C2, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other properties are utilized in the zoning district, which is, this is R2, correct? Um, Brian, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and the response was, this residence is being expanded to afford more space to the occupants to create a formal master bedroom ensuite, added garage bay, and a small uh, bedroom. Got it. Um, and again, this is the one that wasn't answered, but if you could just let us summarize some of your other comments. Due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard side requirement. That is correct. Based on alternate studies that we looked at, both placing the garage on the northerly side of the property seemed impractical, and trying to create a garage space behind the house also seemed very impractical because of the site conditions that we have. Okay, great. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses of the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Looking at new and existing construction in the Scotto Hill neighborhood, the proposed addition is consistent in size and use to many others. A five-bedroom house with a living room and a family room and a home office is not inconsistent with most, if not all, new construction in this area and several existing homes in the vicinity. Gotcha. David. Question. Do you have photos to be able to document this or some kind of a information about the neighborhood to show that there are other homes with three-bay garages and five bedrooms? Contextually, yes, but physical documentation, no, because we weren't asked to provide any. Um, and I'm just referring to some of the newer construction coming up Scotto Hill Road to the intersection with Two Rod Road, which are <laughs> some significantly large residences, some of which do have three-car garages, some of which are 5,000 square feet in size, mm -hmm. and all in the same zoning area. Okay, Brian, can you confirm that? Well, yeah, I absolutely can confirm it. I'm a little confused by your question. I mean, a three-car garage is not uncommon um, in any of the residential districts. Um, adding an additional uh, bunch of living space that ends up equaling 3,700 square feet, some, something like that, that's not uncommon in the R2 zone. In, in this particular neighborhood, that's common? Yeah, definitely on Scott O Hill. Good. No, that's you, why I need yeah. it. Thank you. Anything else? And thank you very much. Um, I think now you can have a seat. We're in good shape. We've got number five. five. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested. So the Board of Appeals is not considering an after the fact application. Correct. Construction has not started. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, Brian, did we have any public comment? 
uh, no public comment. Gotcha. Um, and is there anyone from the public here to speak on this appeal? Then okay, the public portion of this is closed. And uh, we can enter into our board discussions. Um, does anyone have any general comment or do you just want to dive into the, into the findings? <clears throat> Richard? <coughs> Excuse me, I just have one question about this issue about <clears throat> vintaging on the date. Um, have we ever had a, a situation where <clears throat> we, somebody's asked us for a variance on a property that had been remodeled post-1991? And have we ever ruled on that, Brian, in yeah. any way, one way or another? Yeah, I can't tell you. I can't remember which property, but we've run into that at least a couple of times in my time here. And, and the general approach has been the to general consider approach, the original structure? Yeah, if the original structure was there and had not been removed and totally rebuilt. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, then it was it was considered eligible. That was the read that we've gotten from the attorney. I think to the point or the question that David asked about was the addition that was added in nineteen in two thousand did that what did that make it non nonconforming or in other words did that did that push it right to the the setback line or beyond is is a valid question because if they did that and then came back and wanted to add on again, but in this case it stopped short of the of the setback line and and then just to get a reasonable one bay garage, you know, I, you could you could bat that around and say, does it have to be fourteen feet? Could it be twelve feet? You know, I think again it, it, you have to put it in the context of how much of a of of a relief are they asking for and is mm -hmm. it reasonable? Sure. Okay. Any other questions on this one or comments? Or? Yeah. Uh, just an overall comment. Uh, uh, this is well within our uh, scope of um, uh, responsibility and um, you know, and right to grant because it's on a side setback, it's less than five feet. On a front setback, it's less than 10 feet. Yeah. So I just want to make that general comment. Okay. Um, uh, should we uh, should we ha take a vote then on um, whether we feel the applicant has met the requirements for for this element? Don't we have to do each individual? It's been so long since I've been sitting in this chair. That <laughs> we have I to was, go through <laughs> each individual. I think, well, I think it was three months with absences. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a while. So, okay, we'll go through one one by one. And actually, that brings me back to my memories of being a child on this committee. Um, uh, David, maybe you should take us through the next one. All right, so, <clears throat> findings of fact. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much for reminding me. Okay, um, number one, the existing building uh, buildings or structures uh, on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size uh, is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or is with or is a vacant, non-conforming lot uh, of record. Uh, so first of all, I say the, the original existing dwelling was built in 1969, so that's prior to uh, uh, the zoning uh, going into effect, uh, according to the assessor's records. And uh, also, um, there was a 14-foot uh, garage addition in 2000, uh, which was extended to the closest point of the garage uh, to 25.4 feet from the property line according to the plans on file. Okay. Any other questions, comments? No? Okay. Um, now do we take the vote? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. <laughs> um, could, uh, by a show of hands, do we feel that the um, appellant has met the requirements for this item? That's unanimous. Michelle, if you could take us on number two. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. This is a residence. Um, it's being used as a residence. They just want to expand it to have more space um, and uh, create a master bedroom with a garage, um, some more, just some more space for family. Um, 
I appreciate, I just want to add to that presentation was very thorough. So uh, it's very uncommon that we don't have um, extra questions for the appellants. I just wanted to say thank you. Any other comments or thoughts? No. Uh, I would just, uh, Mr. Chair, I would just add, um, as I was drafting up findings, um, the, the applicant put on his site plan uh, the gross lot area and the amount of area that the new structure would would um, um, take up. And if if you took the gross lot area and took 20% of that, they'd actually be eligible for 9,600 square feet of yeah. building. So this is quite a lot less than what they could have actually asked for. Yeah. So I think that's just worth a consideration. Understood. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further comment, uh, do we feel that the appellant has met the requirements for this item? Can I see a show of hands? That is unanimous, thank you. I'll take number three, because this one's kind of a fun one. Do the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. First of all, I would love to meet Carl Weib from March 1965, who thought that this particular shape of property would be a, a, a adequate for the needs of people living in, in the town going forward. Um, because that's fascinating. Given the very strange nature of the, the, the lot lines, which none of which seem parallel to one another, they all seem kind of off. Um, and given, I think, what, has, uh, what I'm glad the appellant brought up as alternative structures, including do we look to the north or do we look to kind of winding down the hill, um, which is both a hill issue, a drainage issue, et cetera. I think they've chosen what is clearly probably the only practical way of adding a third bay to, the, to, to, to this structure. Um, and again, I, we, to echo Michelle, um, we appreciate the fact that you do have documented those alternative structures for us to understand the thought process going into it. So thank you. Any other questions from the board on this one? I was just going to make a comment on it because we usually, this is the one we get all hung up on, or yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you were able to show us that they're, you know, the reasoning behind it and the practicality of what the plan is. Um, and I agree with the plan that you have laid out. Yeah. And again, normally we would love to see the paragraph written out there, um, but the amount of material you gave with the alternatives diagrams is well in excess of what we've often seen in the past. So thank you very much for that. Um, do we feel the appellant has met the requirements of this item? Can I see a show of hands? That's unanimous. Number four, uh, Christine. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. We had a lot of uh, testimony from the applicant that uh, it fits in with the size and uses in the neighborhood and is not out of proportion to what's going on in the neighborhood. It, a 3,000 square foot house is pretty modest today, mm -hmm. yeah. unfortunately, but it is. And um, uh, so I don't see it having negative effects. Certainly. I would certainly agree with that, and I'd also add, you know, there's been a number of new developments in the last 10 years over in that section of Scotto Hill Road, and individual properties have been put in of enormous size relative to, to this one. Um, so I'd, I'd echo what Brian mentioned earlier, where I think the, the, this, this neighborhood is clearly accepting of quite large footprints, three-car garages, four-car garages, um, three-story houses. So. Um, yeah, I think this has been, I think the, the, this looks fine for the neighborhood. So, any other comments from my board members? If not, uh, do we feel the uh, um, appellant has met the needs, uh, the requirements of this item? Show of hands, please. Yes, that is unanimous. And last but not least, Kyle, item five. Uh, this criteria asks whether the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which a limited reduction in yard site is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after-the-fact application. Uh, the applicant has uh, stated that construction has not started, and so I, I think that this um, criteria has been met. 
Any other discussion or questions? No? Now, can I see a show of hands that this has been met? Unanimous. Thank you very much. And then do we have a motion to approve the findings of fact? Yes, sir. So moved. Thank you. Second. Moved from David. Second from Christine. Any further discussion? If not, Doreen, call the roll and we'll have the official vote. Christine Snow? Aye. Michelle Stevenson? Yes. David Bork? Yes. Peter Feinlinger? Yes. And Richard Silkman? Yes. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you very much. The appeal is approved. Can I ask just now that you've approved it, and thank you very much, can I ask one point of clarification? Sure. Um, how long before building permit can be applied for? Uh, you can apply for the building permit yesterday. Okay. Just wanted to confirm. I couldn't miss you until tomorrow. <laughs> That's <laughs> Thank you. Gotcha. Okay. Moving on to appeal number 2764, another limited reduction of yard size residential appeal by Tyler J. Sweetworth of 10 Welch Drive. Here he comes. Before we get, do I actually need to make that? Uh, I think we should for the, for, the, for the record, yeah. Just for the board and any audience members, I do know the appellant and um, his partner. Personally, um, there is nothing for me to monetarily gain or lose by um, voting but uh, today. Um, but we do have a uh, quorum, so if you want me to not vote on this, I'm happy to step down for this. No, I think in a town like Scarborough. I am not in a butter. Um, again, as long as you're not in a butter and you're not, um, a, have, you don't have a direct interest in the property, um, we're a small town. We're going to know one another from time to time as, as these come up. So the only I thing I'd good. suggest is the whole board concurs with that. Yeah, no, I, and I saw some nods, but do we want to take a formal vote or are we comfortable kind of agreeing informally <clears throat> that we can move forward? I don't think we need a formal vote. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. So, okay. Thank you very much, Michelle. Uh, I will then turn it over to, uh, are, are you Tyler? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. time this evening. Uh, so the, uh, I don't have a fancy presentation or anything, but I think you guys should all have the uh, appropriate materials uh, for review this evening. So the um, request is for a application for a limited reduction of yard size. Um, so I reside at 10 Welch Drive in Scarborough, Maine a single family cape built in 1955. So the proposed addition would be to accommodate a growing family and add a master bedroom with a master bathroom and a working office to support a work from home requirement for my partner. <clears throat> um, so I guess I can just kind of go through the document and explain the project a bit. Oh, perfect, you have the land survey up here. So we did get a professional survey done. So you can see the existing property with the proposed addition kind of highlighted in pink there. Um, <clears throat> so it is set back uh, off center a bit from the existing property and that's to be able to meet um, the 30 foot front setback and a 15 foot uh, side setback. Um, so the project itself is a 14 by 26 addition about just under 15 feet high, so a single story. Um, to an existing single-family home, as I said, located at 10 Welch Drive in Scarborough. So the limited reduction of yard size is needed due to the existing structure, again, built in 1955, not meeting current setback requirements. So it, um, we did work with the land surveyor and a builder, South Sea Construction, to look at alternative options if we built off the back, but the back part of the house is dormer, there's a bulkhead back there, if we built on the opposite side of the property, oh perfect, you have the plans. The opposite side of the property has a mudroom and a kitchen and a dining room, so not really an ideal location to build a new master bedroom on that side of the house. Um, so after working with the land surveyor and um, South Sea Construction, the proposal in front of you today, we all felt was the most practical and reasonable um, solution. So in terms of the dimensional reduction requested, it's uh, 30.1 feet to the front boundary line and 10.2 feet to the side boundary line. And again, you can see all that in the survey as it's mapped out.
So the existing structure, as I mentioned, single family home built in 1955. So the, the current uh, front corner of the house doesn't meet the 40 foot setback as it currently stands. Um, so regarding the physical features of the lot and the location of the existing structure, um, the reason it would not be practical to build within the current setback requirements um, is that, uh, again, it was built in 1955 and does not meet the current 40 foot setback requirement. And in driving the neighborhood, there are plenty of other Cape family homes in that area that do have similar additions to what we're proposing here. So it does fit within the feel and look of the neighborhood. So there's nothing out of the ordinary with this particular request. I just wanted to clarify on this one on the front setback. The existing setback, the, or the existing um, setback is 29.3 29.3 feet or 29 feet, three inches, I guess. It's one of the two. 29.3, okay. Um, and what you're looking for on the addition would be, it uh, looks like 30.1. Correct. So you're actually not adding to the existing nonconformity. Exactly. Yep, that's right. Okay. Yep, and that's why if you see um, in the land survey, that's why it's set back from that front left portion of the house there. So that's to, uh, yes, we wouldn't infringe on the current setback. It would actually be a little bit less than gotcha. the current corner yeah. of that house. So the infringement or the, 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 the effectively the new um, uh, setback variance is really the side setback moving down to 10.2 feet. That would be correct. Got it. Yep. Okay. Got it. Okay. Any general questions from, from the team? You may have said it, and I was looking at this. Did you consider putting it directly in the back, and would that have put it into conformity, or would that have not put it into conformity? We did explore adding to the back, um, but in discussing with the builder and the land surveyor, that's where the existing bulkhead is with access to the basement, and then that part of the house. There's actually a weird feature to the house where there's a balcony built off the entire back portion of the house on the second level. So that would um, impede as well. And then the, that part of the house is dormered as well. Yes, David. Uh, I don't see anything in here about lot coverage uh, percent uh, uh, existing compared to what you're asking for and whether or not that would be in compliance. Brian, can you help on this one? Yeah, I did the math. They're well under, well under the 20. Thank you. Okay. Anything from you guys? Okay. Terrific. We will then go through, like we did on the last one, we'll just read through your responses to the, um, the uh, 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 items to be demonstrated. Um, we'll start with number one, the existing buildings or structures on a lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant non-conforming lot of record. Uh, yes, that is correct. The existing single family home was built in 1955. Great. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Yes, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit myself as well as my growing family to use and enjoy the property in the same manner as other similar properties in the zoning district. There are several other homes within the neighborhood with similar additions to traditional style Cape homes. Due to the physical nature, uh, physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. After consulting with and reviewing several different options with a building contractor, South Sea Construction, as well as a land surveyor, main boundary consultants, the proposed addition requiring the yard size reduction is the most reasonable and practical solution based on the existing single family home structure relative to the boundary lines. This is in large part due to the fact that the existing single family home was built in 95 and does not meet the current front yard setback requirement of 40 feet. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood 
will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Correct. The impact of the proposed addition will not substantially differ than other homes in the neighborhood. There are several other Cape style homes in the neighborhood with similar single story additions. Great. And finally, the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested. So the Board of Appeals is not considering an after the fact application. Yep, that is correct. correct. Uh, construction has not commenced. Terrific. Okay. Um, Nothing else than Brian. Are there any public comments or public? No, uh, no, no comments came in. I think I answered a phone call from a neighbor and a butter. Actually, I, I stand corrected. That was for the last one. It was a phone call, but no written comments came in. Okay, gotcha. And it, um, is anyone here to make public comments tonight? It does not look like it. So with that, I'll close the public comment section of this appeal. And we'll go down the list as we just did. Anything, any general comments to start things off before we run through? Okay. Richard, you want to take number one? <coughs> reduction of yard size residential was requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non conforming lot of record. Well, the house was built in 1955, so this criteria is clearly met. Yep, agreed. Any other thoughts on that one? Pretty straightforward. Uh, could I see a show of hands that we the applicant has met this requirement? Yes, that's unanimous. Uh, the re requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. This is um, this is R two, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we've seen a number of these um, in various forms in terms of oddly shaped lots that have. Um, an addition, a porch, a corner that that ends up squeezing out into what was an oddly shaped lot in the, uh, that was platted out in the 1950s. So um, I'm, I'm willing to bet that within this neighborhood, we've probably reviewed other similar claims in the past. Um, so I, I think given the zoning district, given the thoughtful approach to the design, um, and also given the fact that they've, um, uh, that, that they're, they're not, Continuing to impinge on the on the um, the, the front setback uh, indi indicates, to my mind, that they've met the requirements for this. So, any other comments? Do we agree that this has been met? It's a show of hands. That's unanimous. David, number three. Number three. Thank you. Number three. Due to the physical features of the lot and/or the location of the existing uh, structures on the lot. The practical, uh, it's practical to construct the proposed expansion and enlargement of, new, of the new structure in conformance with current applicable yard size requirements. Uh, the, the parcels located on a cul-de-sac since the curvature on there, <clears throat> and um, it's very oddly shaped lot as you pointed out, and um, it's uh, this makes it very difficult to do anything on here without uh, asking for some kind of relief yeah. on, on a setback. Uh, the driveway is also located on the easterly side of the, of the dwelling. It does not create a desirable location for a bedroom expansion. Uh, an existing dwelling is non-conforming. It does not meet the required 40-foot setback uh, that was uh, established years after the uh, dwelling was built. Okay. Any other discussion on this one? Can I see a show of hands that the applicant has met the requirements they have? And then finally, uh, or not finally, Michelle, number four. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure um, on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from, the, from or greater than the impacts and effects of the building or structure, which conforms to the yard size requirement. Um, so the addition is not going to be substantially different from this uh, neighborhood or most neighborhoods in Scarborough. Um, there is a little location map here. As you can see, there's several similar Cape Style homes, um, and an addition is not unreasonable in this case. Any other discussion? Do we agree that this uh, item has been met by the uh, appellant? Show of hands, please. Yes, and then finally, Christine, number five. 
The appellant has not commenced construction or enlargement, and that's true. The appellant has not commenced construction on this addition. We agree, show of hand, please. That is unanimous. Um, then it, with that discussion being complete, do I have a motion to approve the appeal uh, number 2764? Proceed. I'd like to approve this petition. Okay, so moved. Uh, second. Do I have a second? Richard is second. Any further discussion? No, seeing none. Uh, could we have a call the roll to, to approve the appeal? Christine Snow? Aye. Michelle Stevenson? Yes. David Bort? Yes. Peter Feinlinger? Yes. And Richard Silkman? Yes. <clears throat> the appeal number 2764 is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Um, two thoughtfully done applications tonight, actually. Really well done. So, um, Do we have any comments? I have one quick question comment, maybe for Doreen. At the Long Range Planning Committee um, last month, I guess there is a new set of term limits that has been approved by the... Um, the nominations committee or by the town council for, um, for these? Do we, are we impacted by those coming up? I know nothing about it. I know nothing about it. Got it, okay. Um, maybe if I could ask Doreen. I think you're wishful thinking. You want to, you want to be impacted. Is that the issue here? <laughs> uh, this is, it's the person who's been here the longest. I'd like to know. Well, yeah, exactly. So we're actually losing two members of the Long Range Planning Committee because they have been, they have served three consecutive terms and they can't, they have to take at least a one year break. Do you know if that? And I just don't know. Do if you know if that only pertained to the long range? Plan? No, we were told that it pertained to all I think all committees. That's asking you. In fact, <laughs> and in fact, a number of committees um, are, are, have this problem, right? Shellfish and marine resources. I think were the other ones that came up. So if we could just do a check on that for, for next time, yeah, yeah, that, that'd be helpful. Yeah. Um, remember, the next time will be, or we will have three new um, town council members in November and they'll shuffle the um, uh, uh, subcommittee appointments that they have. So getting a new zoning board member approved may take longer than, than usual, not just the normal recruiting, but they also have a, that, that process going on. And remember that you, you, even with this new rule, you're asked to serve until you're replaced. So, um, so even if you've been serving for 12 years at this point, if they can't find someone to replace you, you're, you're stuck. Um, so, uh, okay, if we could just look into that, that would be fantastic. Can oh, you great. be, if you've done three terms and you still want to serve, can you just go to another committee? Sure. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. It's just for that committee. Interesting. And then next okay. year, if you, once you take a year off, you could reapply. And if they still had an application, an opening or whatever, you could potentially be reappointed. Because I feel like some of us would be, if that applies to us, coming up on it. Certainly, you. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you're practically part of the furniture, dude. Opening on the plane, <laughs> <laughs> but. I'm, but I'm probably approaching it as well. I'm. Yeah, and that, that's one of the reasons I just bring it up now. We're, we all of us kind of are on that annual renewal cycle, so um, or the in the year is beyond so. I wonder if that even. Did, did, I wonder if that. Apply, I'll find out, but I wonder if it applies to the alternates as well. Yeah, I, and, and that's <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, we didn't go into that much detail in long range planning. Yeah, but, I, you know. I will definitely look into it. I, it's news to me. Thank you. Uh, they keep me in the dark all the time. I, I <laughs> Though that could be a workaround, couldn't it? You could then go back to being an alternate for a year. Not, yeah, and, I mean, possibly. Like, I don't know. Because you'd still be on the. Well, you'd be a different you're, position. You're yeah. Exactly. I, 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 w I will get the, the full scoop on it. I, I would. Uh, if I can just interject too sure. before I forget, because I'm likely to. Um, there is a, a main municipal association training coming up. There's actually one tomorrow, but I think it's probably too late to sign up <laughs> for it. Uh, but there's one on, on uh, December 10th. If anybody wants a refresher, it's a Zoom, it's a Zoom uh, workshop. workshop. So uh, just let Doreen know. I think okay. it's probably free. So yeah, if, you just have to If register. it's a Zoom one, I think I might yeah. sign up for yeah. a refresher. Just if you want a refresher and yeah. hear some questions being asked and so whatnot. It's not free dinner, but... <laughs> no free to, Just wanted to get that in before I forgot. Thank you. Uh, so, um, anything else? Anything else uh, from members of the committee or anything? <clears throat> Just Richard. one thing. I, a while back, maybe about five or six meetings ago, there was some issue about <clears throat> one of the applicants demonstrating the neighborhood characteristics. Mm -hmm. And there were a number of folks who were a little annoyed that they didn't have pictures. Mm -hmm. 
and we had two applicants in front of us today, neither of whom had pictures, and the applicants who were really annoyed weren't annoyed this time around. The second application did have a full aerial view. But you know, you know what I mean, to yeah. demonstrate yeah. that the houses were similar. Sure. And, uh, and the first applicant even said that he was told he didn't need pictures. Now, yeah. I was surprised by that, but I don't think that would be the yeah, case. I, I, don't think he, I don't think he meant that he was told he didn't need them. It wasn't in the literature anywhere that said it was required. Sure, no, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to clarify. I, I, I never didn't tell for a second. I always tell people, that. whatever you present, make sure it means something. Yeah. So photos definitely use. But I'm, I'm wondering. Something. I mean, if that is going to be something that we are asking for, we probably ought to make sure that it's part of the package. It, it's a simple thing to provide. I agree, and and, and, and I think too. I, I can totally imagine them saying, "Well, it wasn't in the application material to provide pictures, so I didn't bring any pictures along." But we could easily add that to the application if pictures are available of similar properties in the neighborhood. The, the the board requests that they be included with the application. I will also add that wasn't the one that we that I know I was one of the people that was really up about mm -hmm. those, and it was a I thought it was a Higgins Beach character code one, and that would have I wanted specific pictures because that's a little different than just yeah. like hey this is kind of in conformity with the neighbor the general feel like the Higgins Beach has like an actual character code, which I feel like is different, so. And it was actually, there are two of them. One was Higgins Beach and one was in uh, East Grand Ave, sort of Pine Point sort of area, yeah. where they were trying to build um, uh, an upstairs And I think they were thing. making a big deal about it, and that's why we were, like, like they were making a big deal in yeah. those applications when they were like verbally saying, well, this is what everybody else is doing. So then we were like, well, show us. Right. Whereas right. this one was just kind of like, they weren't. I'm, I'm not, I, 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 all, yeah, I'm, I was all just, I'm suggesting is that we should have a policy. It should be consistent and, and it's I mean, part I, of the record. So, you know, we all know Scarborough to some extent. We drive around the neighborhoods. We know what the neighborhoods look like, but that's not sort of part of the record. And yeah. so just to have it as part of the record, it probably makes sense. Yep. I think that they don't need to add anything personally unless they're going to start, like that's going to be their shtick while they're doing the application and say that it's like everybody else. Well, then then you need to show us. Well, well no, one of the criteria is that it, it has to be like similar to the neighbor, rest of the neighborhood. And, and to say, we all know think, Scarborough, but... And I think describing some of the houses, like... I feel like the first per person today was pretty good about describing houses in the neighborhood, and that would have been accurate. Well, but Scott, uh, Scott Hill, Hill is a big area, right? There are two new places at the bottom that are, you know, huge. There's a couple of big houses on one side. The roads off to the other, to the right on it, aren't as well developed. They're smaller houses. You know, yeah, they're and, more and traditional houses. So, you know, it's a big area, and you say in the neighborhood. I think what they really mean is, you know, houses that are adjacent, two houses away, or is it similar to it? And yeah, and pictures aren't going to hurt. Simple enough to do. Oh, I, I, no, I, I, I love pictures. Christine's I love when people look. Christine, okay. sorry, Christine was up there. Good. Yeah. Well, um, for uniformity and clarity, uh, one of the criteria is, does this house impact the neighborhood? Is it different from the other houses in the neighborhood? I think we should just make a requirement in the application that they illustrate some of this by photographs. Yeah, in, in actually, David, you go first. Okay. What uh, we need to keep in mind is that uh, if they can't give us evidence, okay, then it's hard for us to prove. So sometimes we get to dig it out of them like we had yep. tonight. And uh, that's... That's not the way it should work, but unfortunately, that yeah. leaves us with that. That is the only option. Uh, and we can't assume that we all know Scarborough and we should be able to relate to it because it has nothing to do with it. Yeah, that's right. It has to be what, what does the public perceive? Yeah, and and okay? the public gets to see what's on the record. Exactly. So the, if, if there's no evidence, okay, yes, we can help them a little bit like we mm -hmm. did. But uh, it's, it, it really would help a lot if they came prepared. I agree. And, and the other thing I think is, which is important, is 
this form goes back for a long time. The, the, the requirements of what you present for evidence go back to 1991, um, when not everybody had a phone in the, or a camera in their pocket. Um, getting these photos is as much as, could take as much as an eight minute drive around your neighborhood snapping photos with your iPhone. So, so it's the, the burden that we're asking of the applicants I think is de minimis. Um, and it would help the public record and it would help our discussions. So I, I, I think Richard's right and I think if we can add a sentence or ask the code enforcement officer to give guidance that photos would be appreciated and would enhance the board's ability to expedite your um, uh, or your appeal and in, 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 in the fairest way possible. Okay, so I'm not a, I'm not opposed to that, but I do want to caution the board. I think just take for example tonight's requests mm -hmm. was they were pretty straightforward yeah. and added bay to a garage. I don't think it's a big reach to to think that there's other properties that have three bays in a garage. You you know there are. I don't think it's a big reach. They're adding on a master bed. I think it might be a reach if they wanted to add two or three stories on top of a house when it's a completely residential, one story, single family dwelling neighborhood. Maybe that would be out of character. But I think I, I just want to caution the board that should somebody come in, and again, I do my best to coach them. I don't write their application for them. But I don't think you would want to deny an otherwise good application for a reasonable request just because they didn't provide photos. No, I, I think that would be a bad precedent to say. I agree, and but I, I do think, I, I see what you guys are saying about saying to add photos and that it really is minimum. However, I have patients in town that don't even have a cell phone that has a camera on it, like mm -hmm. the old school flip phones or no phone. So. In that case, they could maybe say what they're a butter, like describe, verb, you know, in words what the they've houses got, look They've like. got building plans and they've got surveys right. and, you know, yeah. they have the guy who's doing the building plan take a photo. This is not a serious... I don't serious... think photos are, are terribly difficult, yeah. but I do think that Brian has a good point, too, that that's... Well, but, but, I mean, just as an example, I'm in the three-bay garage. <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge, on the second applicant... There are no three bay garages in that neighborhood. The second, they, didn't, they weren't doing it. No. I know, but but we don't know that, right? I mean, it, if that house had had a three bay garage on, if they had proposed a three bay garage but, on, but, but we wouldn't have known. But again, even if they did, even if there were no houses in that neighborhood that had a three bay garage, everybody had a two bay garage. Is a third bay a deal breaker for you? No. I mean, if it is, garage. if it is, I'm moving out of Scarborough. I don't live here anyway. But. No, it's it's, it's no, the record that has to be. Exactly. I just want to play the devil's advocate. Yeah. I don't want you to get hung up on photos. I think the board has a great brain between it in a, in the discussion, and you can. In certain cases, I don't think photos are necessary. I think that's what I'm trying to say. In certain cases, you know, cooler heads will say, I don't need photos to say this is reasonable. So just because photos weren't added shouldn't be a deal breaker we, if everything else is We, we, we hear your passion, Brian. Okay. So I just, I don't want any, no need to rebut that. I just <laughs> want to put it out there. I, uh, the, the, um, I come back to, though, I think we, we as a board ultimately are putting together a package of facts and findings for the public. And it's the idea of augmenting what the public has available, not just for us. We're certainly capable of We do this once, once a month or whenever we have things to discuss once a month. But there are members of the public who may be only looking at this one appeal of every zoning appeal they'll ever see and that may ever happen in their lifetime um, and giving them access to this, and this goes for other elements of the application. Giving them access to the best possible application, I think, is an important part of our responsibility to the public. So, um, so I think, if we, and again, I don't want to make it a requirement, but I think we, 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 we should, and Brian, your role is kind of shepherding people through this, guide them through the, 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 the idea that this board appreciates photo, um, photographic evidence, particularly for, for things like neighborhood character. And on this one that we, the, the, the first one, uh, 2763, I found it interesting, you know, I didn't have a problem with adding a, um, and I can't imagine anyone having a problem with adding a third garage. But if you look at the overall increase in the house size, they're bulking up that house pretty majorly. Um, now, I'll be honest, I do know the neighborhood. I, I think what they represented about Scott Hill, Scott O'Hill Road area, the Two Rod Road area was entirely correct. They represented to it verbally. I didn't need further um, further uh, things. But if somebody from the public had said, 
I'm concerned with the massing of this in relative to other things, then, then we would have found photographs very helpful of other similarly sized photographs in the, in, of similarly sized homes in the neighborhood that would have allowed us to say, no, actually, we've got hard evidence, not just anecdotal, that says that this house is within keeping the, well, the character of the neighborhood. So I like it. I think it, it, it augments it without providing a, a, creating an undue burden in the future for applicants or putting us in a position where we're going to use a technicality to reject an, um, uh, an, otherwise, um, uh, an otherwise worthy uh, a desire for an appeal. So, so Brian, I, and again, I, I hear your passion on this one. I, I'd ask you to trust us that we will not abuse this, this request. Um, I don't think we, we generally have abused the, um, the, the right that we have as a board to ask for further information from our um, appellants. Um, and I think in general, we've established a pretty good track record. So um, if we could add that request of applicants to, uh, to the future, I think that would be helpful. David. I'd like to respectfully disagree, Mr. Chair. Okay. <clears throat> I don't think uh, photographs should be a requirement at all. I didn't uh, say they should be a requirement. I, it, it sure sounded that way. I said it was a request. A uh, request. Well, I think the request should really be, uh, you know, on the, uh, on the part of Brian, is to, you've got to be able to make your case. You need to pre yeah. present information, some kind of documentation, which could include blah, blah, blah. It could be photographs. It could be just being able to tell us, I've, you know, I surveyed the neighborhood. Here's what's there. Uh, it, it's, it's, so they have to be able to, to present facts to us uh, in order for us to be able to rule in their favor. Uh, at the same time, if they're not prepared, look, we have a responsibility to try to help them. Yeah. And, and I've always tried to function in that way and will continue to do so. You know, our, our job is not to deny. Although when I first you know, served on a different board, not here, I was told by a city councilor that you're going to have to say no a lot. I'm afraid no. I, I've got to disagree. I've been on three different boards now. And that's not our role. You know, our role is to help people to be able to get what they want and need within reason. You know, it has to be within the law. And that's it. And we, we can certainly help them along the way. You know, Brian does a terrific job preparing applicants. Yeah. And we should do the rest of it when they come here. Well, can, I, can I chime in brief? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Well, I, you know, I just think generally when we make factual findings, the more support, the, the, the beefier the record that we have to support those findings, the better. I don't, in the time that I've been an alternate, we haven't had any of our decisions that have come under legal attack. But when that happens, it's good to have some evidence in the record to support our factual findings. So, you know, photographs, anything like that. I mean, in a lot of cases, we're just relying on the applicant's say so, and that's obviously record evidence. But for things where it would be very low cost to provide additional record evidence, like the character of the neighborhood, um, I think that would that, that can only help. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, I, and, and I think this, from in my mind, really does come down to the character of the neighborhood item that we have on this one. The the the, the facts and circumstances of the actual piece of property and a lot are generally speaking are what they are. Um, we're not here to make subjective determinations on that one. We receive the facts, validate them, and do that. But one of the areas of subjective validation that we do is this notion of this. And this is also where the whole, where we've had questions about photo, uh, uh, photographs um, in, the, in the record in the past, where somebody might be Higgins Beach, might be Pine Point, um, it might be just an R2 district that somebody object, uh, that a butter objects to. I would say, though, that generally speaking, we get some advance warning that that's going to come up as an issue. Um, as, and, 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 and Brian, as you work with applicants, you're, you're in advance of this meeting, you probably will be aware of an abutter or public comment that's going to throw the yellow flag on character of neighborhood. And for those applications, yeah, we, we, we are at a bit of a disadvantage if we have to conceptually or purely verbally talk about what the neighborhood is like and what, what equivalent structures in the neighborhood are like. Um, so it's, it really is in the applicant's best interest in those circumstances to, to have that, that record ready to, ready to go. It, it, it strikes me that it's from personal experience, 
it's an awful lot easier to take five pictures of my neighborhood than it is for me to find the deed to my house. <laughs> but I have to. But I have to present the deed to the house. Right. Right. I mean, I, this is. Let's put it in perspective. Really. <laughs> I mean, this is not an onerous requirement that we're imposing on any applicant. Um, you know, and and I don't think it's unreasonable to ask that they provide that for precisely the reasons Peter mentioned and also Kyle. Um, if it were something that I thought would take longer than five minutes of an applicant's time, I'd be hesitant to impose it on them. But this mm -hmm. is a trivial, trivial thing to ask of an applicant. And also, the other thing I'd say, too, is I don't think this board or even any future board would ever use some inadequacy on this part to, um, to, to pull a gotcha on an applicant. Um, what we're trying to do here is give applicants ahead of time the best possible advice on constructing the best possible appeal so that our job both is, e hopefully our job is easy, but also that the, that the public sees it has absolutely no avenue to challenge that we've made the right decision. So um, again, I, I, I didn't mean to be misinterpreted. I'm not asking this as a requirement. What I'm asking um, Brian to do is, you know, you, you, you can see them coming. You're, you're really good at this. And when you see it coming, there's, there's that person who's going to be talking about the character of the neighborhood or, or, the, or the rest. A great suggestion to that applicant would be, be ready with some pictures. Well, Brian's retiring. Yeah, though. Brian's going to be here Brian. forever either. It's the problem but, but, with this whole thing. What, what, is, I mean, just, what is the problem of having it be a requirement? I don't think it's that big of a problem except for my issue is when we're looking at like Higgins Beach applications and it says character of the neighborhood versus this particular um, limited reduction yard size. It's, it says the neighborhood will not be substantially different from, from the rest of the neighborhood, basically. And that is super vague to me versus yeah, character of the neighborhood. I feel like those are two different... different and it's totally discounting over. the value of being unique. I mean, do we want cookie cutter? Does everything have to like, be the same? Before we talk, talk to I mean, people I think it's so speech, it's easy to I demonstrate here? that it's not substantially different. Yeah. Like that wording, it almost that does not require pictures, in my opinion. Does well, the board? How do you know what the neighbor looks like without pictures? Does the board want to see prompts under under these standards, it's like in parentheses? Please provide photos. Yes. Yeah, do you want yes. me to add that to? Yeah. The Please provide that? photos. Would yes, be perfect. I, I would. Yeah. I'm, I move that we have a prompt that said, please provide a photo to, in response to the your response to questions three. Well, and, at least that way it's not on me to right. remember to tell them to yes. bring photos yeah, because exactly. the board won't believe yeah. them when they say. Yes. Yeah, I, I second that motion. <laughs> but so we I just want to add one thing. Don't 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 tell me I'm doing a great job. I completely missed that one applicant did not <laughs> fill in one of those yeah, things. One of the completely problems we, blew by it, and that's on me. And I apologize to the board. For it's on the applicant. <laughs> the, so we'll add another prompt on item three. Remember to fill this one in. So that's that's okay. Um, but I, I I think we've got, we've got a motion and a second to add a prompt um, to invite applicants to uh, to to bring photographic evidence to the table among other items. Uh, should I see a show of hands who is in favor of that? We've got three, not in favor. We've got two. The motion passes. If we could uh, just mock up that with, with a prompt. Yeah, that's all we need. <laughs> yes. it's great. Good interpretation. That's all we need. The, uh, the other thing that helps, though, is when we get the, I forget what it's called, but the plot plans of the neighboring properties mm -hmm. so that yeah. we have a relative, we can see, oh, yeah. that house is 4,000 square feet, that one's 8,000 square feet, they're only asking for three. I mean, okay. just so we have I some idea of what's going on in that neighborhood. A lot of yeah, it's not just photos. Yeah, it's not just photos, but which is why I didn't want to require photos. But I think prompting them for because photographic evidence is okay. is powerful. I think so, it's not unreasonable. Oh yeah. Either, without without question, we uh, it's almost eight fifteen. My God, we've gone so long today. So um, in any event, um, thank you to everyone. Um, anyone who's still listening out there, please remember to vote. Um, it's important that it's now uh, early voting is allowed, but everybody should be voting in town. And um, 
Exactly. And um, our next meeting is December December. November. <laughs> No, um, so we'll see everybody yeah, next month. I am flying back from Tampa that day. I may or may not be okay. here. Gotcha. We'll be all right. I may will try not. my best, but you may or may not Florida be Florida yeah. right now. Yeah. Good luck. Um, okay. I said that on record, and I shouldn't have. Uh, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second, second David. Uh, all in favor, clearly. Oh, Meeting is adjourned. My brother-in-law.